all very welcome to this very special Telecoms Consumer Parliament, the 75th in the series and one with a difference. At this point, I'd like to invite the EVC of the NCC, Dr. Eugene Jua, for his opening remarks. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the maiden edition of the Repackaged Telecom Consumer Parliament here in Lagos. A Telecoms Parliament, Consumer Parliament, is one of the initiatives of the Nigerian Communication Commission established to provide a platform for key stakeholders to meet and address important consumer-related issues. The Nigerian Communication Commission, in its pursuit of carrying out its mandate of protecting, informing, and enlightening, have requested all stakeholders in the telecom industry to gather here today to rob minds and perfect strategies that will ensure good service delivery to all in the industry. Let me start by mentioning some of our achievements through this parliament. Since inception, the Commission has held 74 editions of this program across the country. Feedback from these parliaments have formed part of the Commission's regulatory policy and also led to the enactment of several regulations, including but not limited to the following. One, Enforcement Regulations 2005. Consumer Code of Practice Regulation 2007. Quality of Service Regulation 2012. And Draft Regulation on Number Portability. In order to make the TCP more interesting and result oriented, the Commission has repackaged the Parliament in such a way as to limit participation to major industry stakeholders that will add value to the quality of discussions at the forum. In view of the enhanced participants' profile, it is expected that major landmark achievements will be accomplished by ensuring the following. One, bringing together all relevant ICT stakeholders in the industry to deliberate on prevalent consumer issues with a view to arriving at resolutions which will be implemented by the Commission. Providing avenue for the interaction of, of the Commission with all high-end ICT stakeholders in order to consistently address consumer-related issues. Three, ensuring that resolutions at the forum will eventually guide the Commission by forming policies and guidelines upon review. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this maiden edition is quality of service delivery a consumer prerogative. Quality of service is the overall performance of a telephone network, particularly the level of performance being experienced by the users of the network, while it is the right of the consumers of such services to be better served. To this end, much is expected from the service providers in terms of their contributions that is expected to translate to improved quality of service. In conclusion, therefore, I want to reiterate that among other things, that from the discussions here today, this parliament will contribute to the realization of our PIE mandate, which includes one, ensuring 
the protection and promotion of interests of the consumers against unfair practices, making available information that will help customers make an informed choice of services, improving service quality by identifying service deficiencies and by encouraging, enforcing, affecting or requiring appropriate changes and solutions. Maintaining service quality while recognizing environmental and operating conditions and above all, protecting telecom consumers from abuses and unfair practices. On this note, I hope that our discussions today will be very vibrant. And I once again welcome you and wish all of us a fruitful deliberation. Thank you. The theme today is quality of service delivery, the consumer prerogative. What does that really mean in absolute terms? I would like to call on the director of the Consumer Affairs Bureau, Mrs. Mariam Bayi, and she will explain to us exactly what that means. As the EVC earlier said, one of the mandates of the Nigerian Communications Commission is to protect and promote the interest of consumers against unfair practices from service providers. In the bid to implement this, the NCC came up with the Consumer Affairs Department. This department is actually charged with the responsibility of protecting, with educating and informing consumers about their rights and their privileges, and also keeping them abreast with happenings in the industry. We have so many complaints, and some of them I'm going to list today, they are the issues that we are going to discuss for concerns about quality of service. We all agree that the telecom industry has done well. But as EVC said, whether we want or not, we have issues. And what are these issues? Quality of service issue. Each one of us may be a regulator or a service provider, but we are also consumers. These things have not gone away. They are still there. Unsolicited text messages, dropped calls, interference, deduction of credit, and so on. And even when we have asked service providers to set up consumer care centers, our consumers, some of our consumers are not even aware of these care centers. And where you have call centers, when you call them, the IVR may go on for a long time and no agent picks it up. So a lot of frustration is going on amongst consumers. And these complaints come to uh, Consumer Affairs Bureau in many forms. In our monitoring exercise from January to March this year, we noticed some of the trends in the industry. Because when you keep on telling people that we have observed you're not doing well, sometimes we have arguments and denials from the service providers. So we decided that, okay, we're going to go around and monitor ourselves so that we can have a work, work paper, something that we can rely on and say, look, you're not doing so well. We know you're providing services to people, but if they are not getting value for money, then that service is actually not complete. What we did and used as our parameter for this is rate of connection of calls, IVR, at least achieve up to 95% that if they call your customer care center or call line, they must be response of the IVR to the tune of at least 95%. And the rate of connection of calls to life agent, at least 98%. Not that the music will continue going on. You call a receiver. And the next thing is you keep on listening to this beautiful music until you forget that you really want to talk to another person. An agent doesn't pick, uh, pick it up. You, you end up losing that particular call, and then you do it again. 
We, we actually saw the rate of failed attempts to, for a customer to get to helpline should be less than 2%. You cannot keep on calling a helpline and nobody is answering and the IVR continues and the, over and over again until you're tired. Rate of failed attempts to customer health care, less than 2%. And where a subscriber chooses to speak with a call center agent, the maximum allowable queue time should be less than five minutes. When a life agent does not pick up the, the line, at least you can only keep that line on for less than 10 minutes. We're expecting that a consumer would be attended to. Now, from Mar January to March this year, this is what the table looks like. You can see that the rate of connection is actually 100%. The service providers listed here have actually connected to the IVR. But it's not about the IVR. It's about somebody responding to the complainant. Connection to the agents. You have the rate you can see. The response of agents sitting and attending to consumers. And then failed attempt. You can see the rate at which people keep on calling and they are not getting access to the, to the receiver. I'm going to mention some of these things, not because you're not aware, because you're service providers, but I, I believe that it's not good to be presumptuous. There may be some people here who do not understand what these dropped calls are, unsolicited text messages are. Just to refresh your memory. The unlawful deduction of credit for value added service is not subscribed to. This is a situation in which a consumer finds that credit has been deducted for value added services that did not willfully subscribe to. You will be sitting at home expecting a call from a family member or from your boss. The next thing is you hear one horrible irritating sound, cling cling. When you look at it, it's somebody selling aware selling their wares or somebody preaching to you. If you want to be preached to, you will go to the church or the mosque. If you want to buy anything, you will go to eBay, Waka Now, or any one of these online sellers. You will not expect somebody to be disturbing you at 6 a.m. or as late as 12 midnight with some uh, uh, um, unsolicited text message. And one of the things that we have received continuously is this. Even when consumers want to opt out of that particular um, service, they find it very difficult to do so. And in the, in the, if they are lucky and they do opt out, they are auto automatically renewed without their, their consent. It keeps on coming. All of us are frustrated by this I issue. I think that we need to critically sit down and address this issue. Why are we having unsolicited text messages? This is a service we are not interested in. We want the ones that we are interested in to be treated. As regulators, NCC looks at both sides and balances everything. We care about the service providers, they are investors, but we do care about consumers because we are also consumers and we experience this firsthand. And then the complaints, as I said, epileptic service. What we did now, as I told you that we have categorized this, our outings. We decided to go to universities. We went to trade unions, like for instance, we went to ABU Zaria. One of the things that the students talked about is that they, they have epileptic services, that there are days that they don't get network at all. And then the idea of you have to move from one end of town to get service, they mentioned that as well. Even in this hall, for instance, I will not be surprised that you may get service at this end and you need to walk across to the other end before you will, you, you will be heard. I think this is wrong. And if service providers get this kind of information, they should go over to that particular location and see what the problem is. If they need to improve on their infrastructure, they do that. And then for those of them that do not even have that on ground, it's a question of core location. A lot of these things have been emphasized by NCC. Regulations are there. And NCC has been monitoring it for quite a long time. We will keep on hammering until we are all on the same page. The industry cannot be sustained if you don't have consumers. This is the reason why we are still doing our best to see that we touch everybody, every nook and cranny in this country, and see the telecom industry living up to expectation. About promos and misleading adver advertisements, we have observed that 
they are service providers that just go ahead and start promos without getting the necessary approvals from NCC. Even when we contact them and we tell them that you have not received approval for this uh, promo, it still continues. I can recall that my chief executive has once called me and said, have you watched the television today? This service provider is still um, advertising. Even when we said they should not do so because there's an agreement for the national lottery to continue during this period. This is not okay. That is why I decided that we must mention to you the licensees should send in a written notification for all advertisements of goods and services within the minimum of seven days of the proposed or planned publication of an advertisement. You cannot start advertising without prior approval. And for you to do that, you minimum of seven days, meaning that you can send it a month ahead or two weeks ahead, but at least it should not be less than seven days. And the sad thing is sometimes you, have not, you don't even receive a feedback, we just see you doing the promotions. We are responsible men and women. We've just been asked to think about corporate governance. Good conduct, it's essential if we are to move on. I'm going to conclude by saying business of the way today is about quality of service. We have hammered and hammered. The management has even sanctioned, had cause to sanction for quality of service. But still, we are experiencing issues with drop calls, with interference, with credit deduction. In fact, one of the annoying ones now is that you call and that before you could even get the receiver, it says call ended. I was thinking it was my phone that needed change. But then a lot of other people said, oh no, it's not your phone, Mrs. Bai. It is call ended. When you call, before the receiver will take it, it will go call ended. So please, I am appealing to the service providers that this is the form for you to explain to the regulator and the representatives of consumers here what is it that is going on with the quality of service. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I'm sure that um, all of you have things to say, questions to ask, comments to make about all that we have heard. Um, very thought-provoking, actually. I'm sure it got all of you thinking. Um, how happy are you making your consumers in every sense of those words? So um, we'll start with reactions from service providers. Um, I think there are two sides to the issue of um, the unsolicited messages. Some of them, um, I do agree, do emanate from the service providers in the sense that there is some marketing that goes on. Um, we need to improve on the opt-in and opting out um, technology. Uh, but the bulk of the problem we have are the unsolicited ones, which are called spam SMSs that are dumped on the networks and we then have to quickly switch them off. Now it's very sophisticated technology that we have to put on the switches that can identify the legitimate SMSs and messages that you are sending to somebody or coming into the country, but a lot of times they are ones that are just dumped in huge bulk on us unauthorized um, and without our knowledge. So we have to have these filtering devices that keeps, you know, um, checking for these things and realizing that this is a, a broadcast that we do not want. So it's ongoing. Um, we're working with the GSMA that helps us send out, you know, alerts so that we even share the information that if you see something coming from X and Y, you should block it. So it's, it's work in progress. But there are also very strict rules, um, even set up by the NCC. So where you see them at 4 a.m., um, it's not by design. Um, we are limited as to when we can start sending. I think it's 7 in the morning till 8 p.m. is, is the cut off and no more than four, I think, of the same message or so. So there are very strict rules that we do try and meet, um, but a lot of times, you know, um, not of our own doing, these things um, happen. Uh, on the issue of credit balance and dropped balance, 
I have in many cases responded to comments um, or letters from the Consumer Affairs Department as well as the CPC, Consumer Protection Council, where um, consumers have complained about um, uh, credit balance dropping and so on. And quite often when we go into the history, what we then see is that at some point, maybe two months ago, he opted in for a service that maybe has every week you renew and pay X, and then they forget about it. So when we then go back and say to them, but you asked for this service. Oh, well, yes, I did, but I no longer want it. Now, you know, he's already gone and reported me to the authorities for something that he, you know, or she quite clearly um, opted in. So I suggest a lot of times to um, consumers to really look into what they're opting in for and, and read carefully before they opt in because they're always looking for a little extra giveaway because they think, oh, well, there's something in it since it's a new you know, um, uh, offering in, in, the, in the system. Um, I think that's about uh, the limit of my comments, unless there's something specific for me. Thank you. First of all, let me apologize. You know, no operator sets out to provide a poor quality of service. All the challenges that are on the board are things that engage us a lot of the time. There are loads and loads of us who all we do every day is trying to fix the problems you have put up there. The issues around unsolicited SMS, I think Ibrahim has set out what the problem is. A lot of it is outside of our control, to be honest. A lot of it is as a result of very aggressive data mining that is going on in Nigeria. So people have come, for instance, to a function like this today. In loads and loads of functions like this, people are asked, oh, provide your name, your address, your email, and your telephone number. There are people who go around buying this data. They buy this information. Absolutely, it's very, very big business, and it's the same all over the world. What they've also done is that they realize that our bulk SMS providers have very, very strict rules. And things are traceable to them. What they then do is that they buy the bulk SMS in Zambia. They buy the bulk SMS in Uzbekistan. They buy it in Russia. It's dumped over the internet. You can buy bulk SMS over the internet. So you find that people, you know, and we've put in a lot of filters, just like Ibrahim said, to catch certain things. But they get wiser and wiser every day. So sometimes you see an SMS that says 180. All they've done is used 180 to mask the number that the SMS is originating from. But the average consumer will think that that SMS is coming from an operator. What they also do is that they can send an SMS to you with your own name, or they can send SMSs to people masking their numbers with the name of somebody you know. You know so it is something that we are dealing with. I'm not saying that operators are completely blameless in terms of unsolicited SMS, but the bulk of it, the majority of it, the ones that come in at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., by and large, is coming from a lot of the sort of, we call it guerrilla marketing SMS people. And let me just add one more thing. Uh, sometime in March, I was in the same hall uh, for an event organized by a travel agency. And you know, at the door itself, there was a small uh, basket where you need to drop your business card to win a free trip to London. Now, what people do is, unmindful of what can this lead to, they drop their business card, their telephone numbers are noted, and then these companies use uh, those phone numbers for promoting their products. Now, you know, as we all know, Google in Europe has recently launched a forget me application also where you know subscriber can uh, request google to forget their informations it's right of uh, information uh, uh, which is which is gaining grounds in europe i think something like this if this can be put in law here in nigeria this will help a lot of people uh, for not getting this unsolicited uh, text messages at uh, wrong times or you know not getting sub uh, messages at all if they want uh, that's one part. The second thing is uh, regarding drop balances. Uh, what we have seen in uh, recent past is that a lot of people with smartphones are calling in for drop messages. Now what happens is, this is one of the uh, explanations that I'll share with you. Uh, 
uh, you buy a new smartphone and the moment you switch it on, it gives you a lot of, uh, uh, you know, visually appealing applications and you are unmindful of, you know, how much this is going to draw data from the network. You set up weather conditions of London on your phone without realizing that this is going to draw data from nearest telecom tower and give you how the weather in London is today. Now, people don't realize that this is not telecom service provider who is doing this. This is a part and parcel of features of that smartphone which makes you use those beautiful applications and the rate at which they draw data is amazing. Second, uh, you know, uh, yeah, thirdly, sorry, uh, I, I personally managed a complaint from a very senior lawyer uh, in Lagos where, you know, the gentleman went to France to watch French Open and he came back uh, and had a bill of $5,000 on his Blackberry. Now, he, he blamed Atel and when we dug deeper, we realized that, you know, he was in France and he was using his Blackberry and rate of data charges in France is 10 euro per MB. So you can imagine, you know, what kind of charges he would incur if he is getting 100 mails, which is amounting to 1 gig of data in a day, as compared to Nigeria. Now, Nigeria being a very humble country, we charge very little as compared to Europe. I think one of the things that NCC can help us is bringing parity of data charging with Europe. If they are charging us high, we should also charge their customers high. Uh, that's, you know, a <laughs> uh, small point from my side. Thank you. NCC, an appeal has just gone out to you. Um, Glow, um, inaccessibility to your contact centers and your helplines, can you please tell us what you're doing in that regard? When it comes to our helplines, uh, let me be honest, we have launched additionally in Abuja, which went very well. And we are looking at launching in Lekki. Unfortunately, there is some issue with the Lagos state uh, government, which has, you know, delayed the entire process. And uh, we are launching another one in Port Harcourt, which you already informed the media about. So we are actually doing as much as we can to add on more. In spite of that, we are actually opening more shops for our customer to walk in. And we are having different kinds of avenue for them to come into our call center. Not only through a helpline, we have a web, we have SMS, we have other things as well to make it easier. But we're constantly working on it. And to be honest, I think lately the turnaround um, time for the CCRs has become very high, so we're constantly looking for new people to make sure that uh, our customer don't need to wait too long. And when it comes to whatever has been said before, I, I just totally agree because I know for sure that my network is not sending out any SMSs in the middle of the night. We have stopped that long time ago. It is other people who are using our network who are sending out. I have received that you can come and buy this for this price in the middle of the night. And I don't know how they use our network or maybe they are using uh, internet directly to send out those messages. And it's very hard to control. And I know in the past we have issues from South Africa. They are sending lots of this bulk SMSs, which we try to stop all the time, but it's very difficult. Um, your data. Um, seems to be posing a lot of problems. I'm one of your customers and I've had issues. I had to have my MiFi changed two or three times because I would charge it up and it would tell me for two days searching for network. And it'd be searching for network for two days. What are you doing about your poor customers like myself who are suffering? Um, I'm not very happy to hear of your personal experience. What we normally do before a client uh, uh, purchases um, uh, our, our devices and uh, subscribe to our service is that we check the area in which the uh, customer lives in and whether there is adequate coverage. So I'm not sure about the area that you live in and the coverage in that particular area. 
we have newly uh, set up services in Lagos and we are expanding further in Lagos. So this is the first phase of rollout. Coverage will expand over the next few months. We are also expanding beyond Ibadan, uh, Ibadan and Lagos into Abuja, Port Harcourt, etc. So it is unfortunate. I, I, I am not sure whether the correct processes were followed before somebody sold you the service. I would have our people to look into it. I didn't move house. Sorry? I did not move house. But I don't know whether your house <laughs> is falling within our coverage area proper. Um, visa phone. Thank you and um, for the unsolicited text messages. We, we try as much as possible to send our text messages with the stipulated time. Um, we make sure it doesn't go more than the time that um, we'll try to work with um, the code of, um, from NCC. But we still have the challenges that other operators have um, highlighted. We're actually working on that and we'll see how we can uh, make sure that um, customers or consumers have um, benefits of um, their money and also that they enjoy our service. The thing is, we try, we try as much as possible to see that our text messages get to customers at that time, at um, 8 a.m., from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. But as he said, as the, the man from MTN said, most times those text messages are not from the operators. And you will not know what it gets to you as the consumer, but it comes from the operator, but we would address that. Thank you. There has been uh, a, lot of, a lot of network issues, I'm saying lately. Um, you call, somebody is sitting in the next room, you call him and you are told that the person is unavailable or that the person's phone is switched off. That has been standard in the last four or five weeks. Is there any particular problem Yes, MTN. Um, I, I know for a fact, and you know, the engineers in the room can prove me wrong, even though the biggest person in the room is an engineer also, is the, the rainy season is always a challenging time for services that depend on radio spectrum. Um, operators are doing quite a bit to manage it, um, but I know that it's impacting services right now. I can, you know, anybody can confirm that. It may not be the sole reason, but a lot of the issues around proper coverage, signal access and all that is being impacted by the rainy season. Um, we're seeing unprecedented wind speeds across Nigeria. And if I recall, the, the weather people, the weather agency had issued series of notices so what we're seeing is that no matter how well clamped your equipment is on the tower the winds are shifting so you are losing line of sight etc etc and again that is impacting quality so what operators are doing and i think again this is very easy to verify is that if you speak to any of the oems at the moment all of them are doing a lot of optimization now for operators so we've actually got people they're doing optimization as we speak. It's, it, it's almost, it has become like a daily thing, and this is all in the bid to ensure that service quality does not deteriorate. EVC, I'm very sorry to bring you in. Since he brought you in. We have specified key parameter indices that must be met. In fact, meanwhile, we have only used parameter indices for voice. Uh, so what we have been doing is we have been regulating technical quality of service. Uh, if we, we also, in our regulation, have um, key parameter indices for service, for example, if there is a complaint, there is a minimum amount of time for it to be responded to. The excuses don't really matter to us, except if we are sure uh, that they are concrete. There are many excuses, you know. Uh, the, the, the technology of, of uh, wireless telephony is a very complicated one. And I can tell you, you know, there are many gray areas. 
I cannot confirm or deny what he has said. And that's why we have taken refuge in, a, in, in, in our parameters. Thank you very much. Um, consumer advocacy groups. I would like your comments, if possible, on each of those um, parameters. Um, what I would like to say, because representing the consumers, we want value for our money. We don't think that we should come here and continue to argue on issues that are not really necessary. What we want is service and value for our money. So I don't think we should come here and continue to give excuses. There are too many issues the consumers complain about. Morning disappearing. You load your phone before you know it. I, I, I remember in the month of March, I came back from the state, United States, and I, I, I picked up my phone locally here. I put some morning there after a while. I, I discovered it has disappeared. I did the same thing. It disappeared. I had to go to I don't want to mention the name of the operator now, so that they don't say I'm biased. So I had to visit the uh, customer care place. They told me, oh, something must have happened. You must have subscribed to Susan. So I said, I never subscribed to anything. And eventually, they said, oh, you have to do this to unsubscribe. And that took a very long time before that stopped. So what am I saying? As operating companies, you have what it takes because uh, the manufacturers of those facilities we are using, they are aware of these challenges and they are also, you know, working ahead of uh, the, the, the scammers or the, the, the hackers, you know, by providing, you know, uh, equipment or technologies that can counter those uh, activities. So what I think you should do is to avail yourself the, of the opportunity of these other uh, technologies that can take care of these things. In order not to be giving us endless excuses, we don't. We are, there is no amount of excuses you will give a consumer that he will be happy. Particularly when you make a call and maybe something urgent, and then the person over there, his phone is on, and what you get is that that person has switched on. And when you reach the person, maybe you have to travel to see the person. He says, "I never switched off my phone," and that could happen in the case of emergency. Maybe somebody is sick and wants to reach a medical. Uh, expert and you hear that the phone has been switched on when there was no such thing and before you know it that somebody who is in danger would have died and if you trace who is responsible for the death of that person I think it will be the operating company that said the phone is switched off when it's not switched off so consider the you know heavy implication of these things and uh, do what is right we don't want the excuses and uh, I'm happy this is not a platform for excuses. Thank you. Um, there are issues here that I think we've not addressed. We concentrated on the unsolicited text messages, which they have said um, they were having issues, and they're using spam filters to at least manage that. But nothing has been mentioned about the drop calls. Where do they come from? I think it's a combination of many issues. Dropped calls, is, is, uh, sorry, the weather is one. Um, but a lot of times we haven't talked, well, today we haven't talked about what happens to our facilities that carry the traffic. Um, I was just saying to uh, Leanne next to me that, um, you know, I, I live um, sort of fairly near um, the NCC offices here in, in Lagos, and I had perfect service. Then all of a sudden one day I noticed it started to degrade. And what happened? A 15-story building had come up right in front of where the mast is. And that just completely damaged um, uh, service in a sector until we had to go and put up another mast on the opposite side of this new building. So simple things like that can cause it. But I can tell you, two days ago, I got a complaint from uh, uh, one of the states. Um, and what had happened, one of my service providers had a, an issue with the state revenue board. What did the state revenue board do? They went and sealed all my sites. What business do I have with if Mr. B has not paid his tax in that state? 
But what they do is not only do they go and seal it and stop me from supplying diesel, which will keep it running and you won't lose service, but they quite often go in and rip out the equipment. So before I can send out teams, it's a problem. So until we can get that law enacted that makes it clear that only for security reasons or with the express approval of the NCC, you cannot walk in. Yes, I should be sanctioned if I haven't done anything or if I haven't done things that I'm supposed to do, such as get my building permits or whatever it is. But once I have all of that, the mere fact that you want to collect your tenement rate does not mean you should go and seal my site first to get my attention, quote-unquote. That really does impact service. Yes. Yes, just, you know, because, I mean, the, Mrs. Bai had said that, look, this is the new repackaged consumer parliament. And in the spirit of complete candor, um, I think that Ibrahim has talked about the problem with access to our facilities, with keeping our facilities available to provide services. As we speak today, I know that at least three of us big operators in Enogun State, a lot of our facilities have been shut down. So when a hub site goes down in Enogun, it's, that hub site perhaps is a feeder site for 50 other sites. It must impact service. As we speak today, development control in Abuja is not allowing us to lay fiber. We are in the course, we've got permission, we're laying it, and then for things completely unrelated to the fiber build, somebody will come and stop the work. In Plateau State, is the same thing. So, I mean, I think one of the things that will be nice to come out of the consumer parliament is for all the stakeholders in this room, the consumer advocacy groups, to also lend their voice to helping us get access. We need somebody to go and help resolve access in Enogun State as we speak today. The Commission has been helping. No, no, we have, the Commission has gone with us to several meetings in Enugu, but the reality is that as we speak today, sites are sealed. And if sites are sealed and they are unavailable, there's no way that quality of service will be optimal. All over Nigeria, we need people to come and help us open access to our sites. Nobody goes to shut down Kainji Dam. Nobody goes to shut down any of Nepal's infrastructure. But we are as critical as, as a national infrastructure as the power infrastructure. Thank you. No. Thank you. I think we should take these two steps further. We've had you, sir, the consumer advocate. I will give you an assignment. Hmm? What my colleagues have said is very true. These, are, these tasks, these infrastructure are are threatened. Can you please do something that would help us as the operator to give you better service and also help you to enjoy better service? Can you form vigilante groups? So when you see somebody tick, you know, um, fiddling with a base station, take it upon yourself as a stakeholder to go down to that person as a group individually as you say, look, my friend, what are you doing here? You know, it's not just only about us uh, bashing us and, I mean, customer is king. Take some responsibility in this regard. So, can you arrange yourselves, your advocacy group, arrange yourselves into groups, maybe Sholomolu, Ikeja, wherever. Go down there, watch those decisions on our behalf because they are as critical as pipelines. They are critical as Nepal pylons. So, what you could do is think of what you can do in that regard, get back to us, and then let's start talking. I have one question for the executive vice chairman of the NCC. We want to know whether your commission have mandate to regulate on all the issues that we are discussing right now. We want to take premise from our interaction with your commission over the last two years. We've engaged your commission on two issues that borders on consumer protection. The first one was on the issue of mobile content services. We sent a letter to your commission in the year 2012 with respect to anti-competitive practices uh, by the telecom service provider versus mobile content service providers. We didn't receive any positive response from your commission. We also sent another letter to your commission last year on the issue of compensation for telecom subscriber on poor quality of service. On poor quality of service. 
your commission, you one of your response in the media was that you don't have mandate to seek for compensation for telecom subscribers. So all the issues we are discussing today, about eight of them, uh, we've listened to what these four service providers, their contribution they, on unsolicited text messages. We know they don't have maybe full control on unsolicited text messages and advertisement of unapproved promotion. But the rest borders on quality of service. We want to know whether your commission have mandate to regulate on this so that it won't be like the issue of seeking redress for consumer with respect to quality of service. So that's my question. What the regulator does is that he sets guidelines. Guidelines that should be followed. You have talked about writing letters to us. The fact that we invited you today and we haven't been inviting you before seems that we have just recognized you. The issue about the mandates we have, we have mandates for all this. That's why we are discussing it today. But as far as consumers are concerned, our mandate is to provide good services to them. Our mandate does not specifically say we should recompense consumers. The regulations that we have talks about finding operators who are actually the people that we regulate directly. What we do is that insist that operators should provide good services for consumers. And if they don't do that, we penalize them. If, for example, you know, consumers want compensation, they should seek redress, not from the regulator. You know. So, I cannot, if, for example, I find an operator, he pays the money, it becomes government money. It has to be appropriated. I cannot give money to the consumers because I need parliament to appropriate it. You know, that is the law. You know. So if, for example, uh, you want consumers to be uh, recompensed, there are many avenues of uh, redress for you. There is the Consumer Protection Council. There is also uh, the courts, if you want to do that. In fact, as we are talking today, we have issues in the courts which we are addressing, which has come from advocacy like yourself. I'm not saying it's from you, you know. So, um, there are venues to do that. But really, you know, let us talk about quality of service. And, you know, I've come and I've said what I want to say. You know, there are many issues about quality of service. You know, and when it is written in the Nigerian papers. Everybody has to be objective about it. Well, one, I can tell you, you know, the quality in Nigeria is not the worst. I travel very widely. I can also tell you that the quality we have here today in Nigeria is better than the quality you have in places like Dubai. You know, the wireless service is a difficult one. There must be drop calls. You cannot do it without drop calls. The important thing is that you control the drop calls. If they get excessive, it's not good. But I challenge any one of you here to tell me any service in Nigeria that is better than telecom service. Is it the banks? Is it the airlines? Hmm? So let us really be very, very, you know, you know, let us be very, very careful when we do, you know, the service is not perfect. And we are trying to make it good. Let people not escalate it to things that are, don't exist. Thank you very much. Like what the EVC said, if you look at our own economy, there are various sectors that are having issues. And I believe that the communication sector is not lagging behind. So please let me commend the operators here for what they are doing. But the greatest room in life is the room for improvement. That is what I want us to know. Because especially if you look at unsolicited text messages, 
I'm from the Lottery Commission. There are so many of them. You have won this when you did not do anything. You, you, you do this and you win this. What I want this forum to look at is how the operators and the regulators have to work together to improve what we are doing. For NCC, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to work with you. And most of the telcos here are equally working with us. So my own promise to this forum is that we are ready as a commission to work with you to improve on what we are doing here. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Please appreciate yourself. We are also grateful to all the service providers and for your invaluable contribution so far. Same goes to the advocacy groups here, the press, and for everyone here for partnering with us, the NCC, to protect consumers and for your contributions. I hope you will be ready to make further contributions in future to make the telecom industry enjoy better regulation. This is the starting point, as the director mentioned. We will be holding TCP in these repackaged forms to find solutions to the problems or the challenges we have in the industry. So on this note, DVC sir, and the management staff, the DG uh, National Lottery Regulatory Commission, we say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for coming. And we pray that God will take you safely back to your destinations. Thank you on behalf of NCC. I'm going to mention some of these things, not because you're not aware, because you're service providers, but I, I believe that it's not good to be presumptuous. There may be some people here who do not understand what these dropped calls are, unsolicited text messages are. Just to refresh your memory. The unlawful deduction 
of credit for value added service is not subscribed to. This is a situation in which a consumer finds that credit has been deducted for value added services that did not willfully subscribe to. You will be sitting at home expecting a call from a family member or from your boss. The next thing is you hear one horrible, irritating sound. Kling, kling. When you look at it, it's somebody selling a wear selling their wares, or somebody preaching to you. If you want to be preached to, you'll go to the church or the mosque. If you want to buy anything, you'll go to eBay, Wakanao, or any one of these online sellers. You will not expect somebody to be disturbing you at 6 a.m. or as late as 12 midnight with some uh, uh, um, unsolicited text message. And one of the things that we have received continuously is this. Even when Consumers want to opt out of that particular um, service. They find it very difficult to do so. And in the, in the, if they are lucky and they do opt out, they are auto- automatically renewed without their, their consent. It keeps on coming. All of us are frustrated by this I- issue. I think that we need to critically sit down and address this issue. Why are we having unsolicited text messages? This is a service we are not interested in. We want the ones that we are interested in to be treated. As regulators, NCC looks at both sides and balances everything. We care about the service providers, they are investors, but we do care about consumers because we are also consumers and we experience this firsthand.